Thank you for joining me for module five recap. Module five is important. The first thing that we did is we looked at the conservational mass. It sets the tone for module six and seven. Okay. Um, in order to apply conservation of mass, what I did was I picked up the Reynolds transport theorem. I'll have it up there. And I inserted capital B is equal to mass. Fairly straightforward. Okay. And then what I obtained is as the lowercase b, which is the intensive property, is equal to capital B divided by mass, I get myself a 1 for lowercase b, which is the intensive property. Okay? And you will see that the left-hand side is written for a control mass. Okay? And you need to look at the videos from the module 4 to understand why this is. And so the left-hand side, how does mass change over time? For a control mass, well, the answer is it doesn't. So then the MDT becomes zero, and I get my final version of the equation for the conservation of mass, or sometimes it's called the continuity equation as well. Okay? After I derived the equation, I looked a little bit into the second term on the right-hand side. It's very similar to how I did for module number four. I looked at V dot N, and I show you that it is a plus V for exit, minus V for inlet, and zero otherwise. Um, and also what I did is I, I introduced you a definition called mass flow rate. Very commonly used in food dynamics, mass flow rate. Okay, you may want to watch the lecture video for that. And also then, what I did was, okay, this equation looks a little bit involved. Why don't we look at the cases where this equation becomes a little simpler, so I can analyze it for myself, okay? And the first case that I did look was the steady. We discussed, again, everything is coming from module 4, we discussed steady in module 4. And what we shown is the first term on the right-hand side up there will become zero. The reason is that it's looking at is that triple integral is not a function of time for a steady flow, then I will get myself zero for the term. So the, the triple integral drops out, so that's a big win for us, okay? But then I, I still have the second term in my analysis, and I still showed you that, hey, m dot m net is equal to m dot exit for the particular case, okay? And then I switch gears into the second special case. This time around, I look at the constant density. So when is there constant density a good assumption? Well, for liquids, it is. For gases, if my thermodynamic state, state is fairly constant, then I can make the assumption that it is fairly constant the density. Okay. Um, with that assumption, I showed you that the equation, I also picked up the steady. I'm adding to the constant density plus steady this time around. And I showed you that I get myself a volumetric flow rate this time around. Okay. Volumetric flow rate at the inlet is equal to volumetric flow rate at the exit. So that's a very important equation that we use common news in fluid dynamics as well. Last but not least, I look at the third assumption. The third assumption is a special assumption, and we call this uniform flow, and that's a little bit of a misleading term, so I'd like you to watch the video to understand more, but basically it means that the velocity distribution at my inlet and exits are uniform. It's not changing over my area that I have. Okay, It's like a constant indicit type of velocity profile that I have. With that, I was able to get rid of integrals. So that's a huge win for us. The equation itself, draw, I'll put it up there, the equation itself looks like a summation sign as opposed to integrals, much more easy to manage. Okay. And then what I did in the rest of the module is I practiced this. Okay. This is the easiest equation out of all God's special mass, momentum, energy. This is the first start point. I solved various equations. In one case, I had uh, multiple exits, and I showed you how to make it like a uniform so I can manage that. In another case, I looked at a case where we have that density is not constant, so I can't make that assumption what happens there. I also looked at a case where the exit flow was viscous, which means that it's going to have a parabolic velocity profile. And last but not least, I look at the unsteady flow, and I actually on purpose I picked a Quite hard for an undergraduate class, I'll be honest. Okay. Quite hard question from the unsteady, and I looked at that case and analyzed it. 
for you. Okay? I would like to make sure that you understand this module 5 because module 6 and 7 is based on this and honestly module 6 and 7 are a little bit more involved than this. Okay?